Cement is the most widely used material in the world after oil. Every day, thousands of tons of this powerful material are produced to build buildings, roads, bridges, and basically all cities. And cement is the glue that holds all the structures of the world together. But have you ever wondered how that rock dust turns into such a strong and durable material capable of keeping gigantic buildings standing for hundreds of years? Well, today we will travel to Texas, United States, home to one of the largest cement factories in the world. And we will see step by step how rock is converted into the essential material we use to build everything around us. From the impressive way the rock is extracted until it becomes that perfect material for construction, we will discover everything behind the manufacture of cement. So get comfortable, because today we are going to discover how the material with which everything around you has been built is produced massively. We start! Step number one, extraction of raw material. The manufacture of cement begins long before we see that gray powder in the stores. Everything starts in the large quarries, where the key rocks are extracted, limestone, clay, and gypsum, essential for the creation of cement. The process to extract these rocks is really impressive. Explosives are used. Yes, you heard right. Large drilling machines excavate the rock formations, creating holes where controlled loads of explosives are placed. These loads are carefully inserted into the holes and then sealed with gravel to make sure that the explosion is concentrated in the right place. When the explosives are detonated, the force of the explosion is so great that it fragments the huge rocks into much smaller and easier to handle pieces. The key here is to divide the rocks without causing unnecessary damage, obtaining only the material necessary for the next process. Imagine witnessing one of these impressive explosions and seeing how, in a matter of seconds, large blocks of rock are fragmented into smaller pieces. These fragments, now much more manageable, are quickly loaded into huge trucks that transport them to the plant, where their transformation process will begin. Let's go to the factory. Step number two, crushing and grinding. Once tons of rock have arrived at the factory, the next step is to crush them. In large crushers, the stones are broken into even smaller pieces, reducing them to a thick dust. But that is not all. After fragmentation, the material goes through a new grinding process to make it even finer. The rocks are subjected to such an impressive pressure that they become a fine powder, almost like flour. This powder is the basis of what later will become cement. To achieve the appropriate fineness, ball mills are used, huge rotating devices that, at high speed, grind the material until it reaches the perfect size for the next production phase. The most surprising thing is that in a cement plant, thousands of tons of rock can be crushed and ground per day, making this process one of the most intensive and fundamental of the entire production. Did you know that grinding is one of the longest and most crucial processes in the manufacture of cement? The finer the powder, the better it mixes, which ultimately results in better quality cement. This step, despite seeming simple, is an industrial challenge. And when the dust is ready, the next step in its transformation is about to begin. Let's see what happens now. Step number three, mixing and homogenization. Once we have the crushed and ground rock powder, the next big challenge is to mix it perfectly. Limestone, clay, gypsum, and other additives must be combined precisely so that the cement has a uniform consistency and quality throughout the process. Why is this so important? If the mixture is not homogeneous, some areas of the cement may be weaker than others, compromising the durability of the constructions. Imagine that the mixture is not correct, and when building a building, the cement does not meet the standards. It would be a catastrophe. The building could easily collapse, endangering lives and property. How is this perfect mix achieved? The answer is in the machines. Large engines and giant silos come into action, moving and mixing the materials at high speed inside huge cubicles, ensuring that all the ingredients are evenly distributed. It's like a perfect dance between limestone, clay, and gypsum, where each particle is integrated with the others until the mixture is completely homogeneous. It's not as simple as mixing ingredients. It's a precision operation. Each grain of limestone and clay must be exactly in its place, because a small error could affect the quality of the cement as a whole. This process ensures that all properties are consistent throughout the material, 
which means that the mixture will have the same characteristics in each part. Now that the mixture is ready, let's take the next step, where everything will become a solid and resistant material. Let's go. Step number four, cooking in the rotary kiln. This is the moment where the magic happens. The crushed and well-mixed material enters the rotary kilns, which reach extreme temperatures of up to 1,500 degrees Celsius. It's so hot that it literally transforms the mixture. Inside these kilns, the limestone, clay, and gypsum react with each other, fusing to form clinker, the key component of cement. Clinker is a solid material, almost like small hard pebbles, which will later become the cement we know. In short, clinker is the intermediate product, which, after being processed, becomes the cement we use for construction. This step is fundamental because, without the exact heat, the chemical reaction does not occur and we do not get the clinker, which means that the cement will not have the necessary resistance to be used in construction. The only drawback is the environmental impact. The kilns release carbon dioxide, which contributes to pollution. But factories are working to reduce their environmental footprint. Once the clinker is formed, it is cooled quickly to preserve its properties. Now, yes, what follows is to turn it into that fine powder that we use as cement. Let's go to the next step. Step number five, grinding of clinker and additives. With the clinker already cooled, we arrive at the next step, converting it into cement. The clinker is mixed with gypsum and other essential additives. Why? These additives are fundamental to control the setting time of the cement, which means that they will affect how long it takes to dry and how much it endures over time. The clinker, now in solid form, is placed in high-capacity mills. This is where the action comes in. It is ground until a very fine powder is obtained. This step is crucial because a finer cement dissolves better in water, which improves its performance. The impressive thing about this phase is that, being finer, the cement has more consistent properties and is stronger. So, the better the grinding, the more efficient the cement will be to last over time. And so, with the cement ready and well ground, all that remains is to make sure that it is in perfect condition before packaging and distributing it. Let's see how it is prepared to go out into the world. Step number six, quality control and storage. The cement is almost ready. But before it goes out into the world, we need to make sure that it meets the highest quality standards. This step is key because the safety and durability of the cement in construction depend on its constant quality. So, how do you make sure that everything is in order? Rigorous tests are carried out on samples from each batch of cement, analyzing its strength, fineness, pH, and conductivity. A common example is the compression test where a sample of cement is placed in a press to measure how much pressure it can withstand before breaking. The technicians verify that everything is perfectly balanced because a defective cement could compromise the safety of any construction, and that is something that we cannot allow. Once the cement passes all the tests and its quality is certified, it is stored in large silos or bags to keep it in optimal conditions until its distribution. These silos protect the cement from moisture and other factors that could alter its properties. And with the quality cement approved and ready, we are one step away from its distribution. Ready to see how it is taken to the end user? Let's go to the next step. Step number seven, distribution and end use. Finally, the cement is ready to do its magic in the real world. Once approved in the factory, the cement is transported by trucks or ships to the places where it will be used, the construction companies, the construction projects, or the stores where consumers buy it. Imagine this. Every day, factories produce tons of cement, and distribution is vital to supply the construction industry worldwide. The process does not end there. Once it arrives at the workplace, the cement is mixed with water and other materials such as sand and gravel to form concrete, which is the material we use to build practically everything around us – buildings, bridges, roads, and much more. It's impressive to think about everything involved in making cement, isn't it? From the rocks in the mountains to the skyscrapers and roads that fill our cities, every bag of cement has gone through a long process of extraction, transformation, and quality control, ensuring that every construction is safe and durable. The next time you see a building, a bridge, or even a road, think about everything that has happened for that cement to become what it is today. To finish, tell me, have you ever worked in construction? Did you know everything involved in making cement? 
leave your answer in the comments. And if this video has surprised you, don't forget to like and subscribe to learn more fascinating manufacturing processes.